this is Elizabeth Estel, Homeschool Christian Mom, and we're talking about uh, having a biblical worldview this week. And I'm glad that my one-on-one -on -one clients and that you have joined me to, to help talk about this. And part of the reason I'm talking about this is because of this book, Biblical Worldview, Creation, Fall, and Redemption, that I got from going to the BJU Press Homeschool Conference Foundation Summit, which was a very, very good. And all the BJU curriculum is based on this biblical foundation, and they put it in all their subjects. And you can see it, if, if you use all of their curriculum, you can see it as it builds and builds and builds. And so that your children get a good foundation um, of creation, of God's purpose in history, science, literature, the orderliness of math and problem solving. Um, and you also get it as far as the Bible so that your children have a good view of doctrinal truths, not just the stories of scriptures, which I don't like to use that word. I like to use historical accounts, but all of the Bible, what it means and where it's going. Um, thank you so much for joining me for this talk of a uh, biblical worldview today. And so we're talking about what that biblical worldview looks like. And I think a lot of times people think, well, of course I believe the Bible. And of course I know there's a God. And I'm just not sure it can hold up to today's society and cultural norms and the difficulties that we're facing today with gender identity pro-life, pro-choice, uh, different marriage issues. And so I keep it to myself. And society is trying to marginalize Christianity this way. And our students need to be prepared to engage the culture. Now, I don't mean like beat people over the head with the truth, but our culture today is trying to deny that people have spiritual needs and that there's a uh, these deeper meaning that there is a God, that there is redemption. And we need to not back away from that because whether they deny it or not, they do have spiritual needs and they need Jesus Christ as their savior. And we need to be able to prepare our students about that. So when we were talking about worldview yesterday, we were saying that it's not just that we have a certain number of facts at our disposal so that we say, well, if we know 10 facts that refute evolution, we must be right because somebody else only knows eight facts about it. Um, so then if somebody comes along and they have 15 facts supporting evolution, does that mean they're right? Or we're not following the evidence to see what's right or not. We're going from a Bible-based, faith-based view. And we're, we're looking at it through our different lenses. I thought I had my, oh yeah, hold on. I got these cool glasses when we went to Jamestown one year. Don't you like those? We're looking at it through the lens of faith and the Bible, and we're not going to back down from that, and we're not going to say, oh, because so-and-so has more evidence, they must be right. We're going to stick with the Bible, and we're going to be scripturally based. And we need to have that good foundation so that we can say, oh, I know the Bible is right. I know God is right. And so how do I put that in a loving way so that I can talk to people about that? And eventually, when they need to know who to come to to talk to about their spirituality, they'll know to come to us. So we're talking about what, what should we do? Do we give in to the world? Well, I certainly don't recommend that. Do we give in just a little because maybe we don't understand it quite all so maybe we're partially right and maybe some evolution was in the world and maybe this kind of behavior or that kind of behavior is okay um no the bible speaks about things and we need to go with that so option three is we don't give in at all if someone contradicts scripture no matter how s smart they seem to be but we need to be ready to talk Powerfully and confidently, knowing that God's reason for using the weak to shame the wise is so, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. So, obviously, this book argues for or recommends option three. You never back down. Um, and that option three has two parts, too. There are some people who are 
experts, like super experts in biology. People like at Ken Ham's um, in the uh, ICR, Creation Research Foundation, those people, they're experts. And so that they can argue from that expert that they have, they have more information than just what we have. And perhaps we, but we still need to know what the biblical worldview is so we can say, this is why I have come to this conclusion. So we're gonna, t the, this book on page five talks about a chain, a chain of reasoning. So every chain of reasoning has to start somewhere Every brick of your knowledge has to be built on some ultimate foundation and a worldview is like a set of lenses through which you see everything around you. And we've already talked about having that lens of faith in the Bible. Um, and so I'm sure you've all heard the illustration before of a kid who doesn't have needs glasses and then they get glasses and they're like, wow those trees have leaves on them that is so cool because they can finally see clearly and that's what we're trying to do with our students too we're trying to help them to see clearly the issues of the day and so um let's say um, some people say well hitler was a really bad guy because he was in charge of killing a lot of people well why was that wrong well because these people have a lot of value taking innocent human lives was wrong. Well, that's a beginning of your chain of reasoning. Um, well, what's, why is it wrong? Well, because taking even one human life is wrong. Well, that's one more chain link, but why is that wrong? Um, human life should not be taken without just cause because human life is intrinsically valuable. And that's what it says in the constitution. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. By saying that, Jefferson added one more link to the chain. Humanity gets its value from its creator. So we can go back in our reasoning and say this is why we get this system. And we have a heart system and in our head system and then we have our story. A worldview tells a master story that begins in the beginning like Genesis and tells what happened afterwards to shape the world into what it is. Um, the story of some of these evolutionists is promoting that something like once upon a time the Big Bang happened, we all evolved by random undirected processes from non-life through lower life forms to reach the top of the evolutionary heap. Our problems exist because our evolution is incomplete. Well, that's a one way to organize that thought. I have this one here that's going to be bothering me. There we go. Um, and they, uh, the scientists go from that and it, they use that to guide them um, to explain things and the reason we want things explained is because we are made in the image of God and we are have God's logic in our lives and we want to put things in some kind of order but the Christian story is also a powerful big story the argument of this particular book is that biblical Christianity tells the only big story that works the only one that is true and this is called the meta narrative this is the story of creation, fall, and redemption. So when you put your story, when you're viewing the world through your lenses of faith, the Bible is able to deal with the cultural problems of the day and to deal with the issues that we faith, face every day. And we realize that everyone has a worldview. It's not just Christians that have a worldview. It's a basic set of beliefs, assumptions, and values, which arises from a big story about the world and produces individual and group action, which is what we call our, our culture. Um, many liberals influenced by a secularist worldview don't like to be upfront about their deepest beliefs, values, and commitments. They hide behind a veneer of neutrality. But when you really talk to them, they've got a different worldview, and that's how come they come to a different conclusion. 
So as you are talking to your students, as you're talking to them about Bible truths, make sure you're talking to them also about what their biblical worldview is and set that foundation so that they are well grounded and they are able to engage others outside of Christianity in a kind and gracious way with the truths of the Bible. We have to be very intentional in what we're teaching our children. They're not just absorbing it. Like maybe we were lazy. Maybe we thought they would just absorb it, but we need to be more intentional with how we're teaching our children so that they have that good foundation and they're ready to engage the culture and be the salt and light that we want them to be. Thanks so much for joining me today for this biblical worldview number two. We're going to be tomorrow at 445 also. And I appreciate all uh, of you taking your time. If you need to get in contact with me, put something in the comments, private message me, come on a homeschool Christian mom group, and we'll get your questions answered and help you to be a happy homeschooler, not a reluctant homeschooler. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.